Uh, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be discussing the concept of twinning. And so there are two types of twins majorly. We have what we call monozygotic and dizygotic. So monozygotic is where you have identical twins. This is due to splitting of the same zygote. In dizygotic twins, you have formation of independent zygotes. And so we call that fraternal twins who do not share the same. Uh, they don't have the same genetic makeup. Now, there are many types of monozygotic twins. Now, one of the earliest forms is dichorionic, diamniotic. By earliest, I mean the split occurs during the first four days after fertilization. So it can either occur at the two-cell stage, where each cell becomes its own morula, and then each morula now goes and forms an independent twin. Or it could be the split of the morula, okay, and into two independent morula, and then you get a formation of the twins. So each twin will have its own amniotic cavity and will have its own placenta. Hence the name dichorionic meaning two placenta, diamniotic meaning two amniotic sacs. Now you could have what you call a monochorionic, diamniotic form of monozygotic twinning, where the split occurs during the blastocyst stage. So usually this occurs beyond the uh, day four fertilization, so usually between day five and day seven. And so what usually happens is the inner cell mass of the blastocyst is what splits. And so the placenta does not split. It's actually the inner cell mass which will become the embryo. So each develop with their own amniotic cavity. So it will be monochorionic, that is shared placenta, diamniotic, each with its own amniotic sac. Then you have the monochorionic monoamniotic form of twinning which occurs during the second week of development where the bilaminar disc splits into two. So already in the second week, the amniotic sac has already formed. And so what only splits is the epiblast. So the epiblast splits and forms two independent uh, fetuses who will share the same amniotic sac. And so this is how they, are, they appear on an ultrasound image. You get two independent uh, twins sharing the same amniotic sac with the same placenta. Now, during the trilaminar disc or during late blastocyst uh, stage time when you are getting your implantation, you can get a conjoined uh, form of twinning. Now, this is an ultrasound showing you conjoined twins at the level of the head. So, you can be able to see the calvaria there. So, this is a neurocranium and you can see this fusion being represented aptly here by the fact that you have twins within the same amniotic sac sharing the same placenta and their, uh, their heads are actually fused. So we call this cranial hegas. Now the other types of conjoint twins, you can get conjoint twins at the level of the thorax, what we call thoracopagus, or the abdomen abdominopagus. In this scenario, it is thoracoabdominopagus because at the level of the thorax and the abdomen, there is complete fusion. You can have fusion at the level of the ischium with the lower limbs being independent on the sides, so we call this Istiopegas tripas, tripas referring to the fact that there are three different lower limbs. So one, two, three. Sometimes you can have four, you can have one, two, three, four. And so usually we can call that Istiopegas tetrapas. Now in dizygotic twinning, they are genetically different. So you have two ova being released during the same ovulation cycle. Now each ovum is fertilized by a sperm from the same male or a sperm from two different males. So during the same window of fertility, the woman can have sex with two different males, having ovulated two different ova, have each ova fertilized by the sperm from the different males. And we call that heteropaternal superfecundation. So this was a story that was uh, famous during 2015 in the US, where a woman gave birth to two uh, racially different children. Okay, one was black, one was white, and so DNA testing showed that they had two different fathers. Now, the main consequences of twinning is that you can have a normal delivery, or sometimes it can be a preterm delivery. So this is before term, and this usually is caused by premature rupture of membranes. Or sometimes you can have what we call twin to twin transfusion syndrome. You can have too much amniotic fluid or you can have a parasitic twin or a vanishing twin. So this is what we call a vanishing twin. You have a twin who was seen in the amniotic sac with the accompanying twin 
and then that twin later actually yeah is shown to have disappeared now the thing is this twin usually goes into the placenta okay and so this is usually how they appear so you have the placenta here and then you have this parchment of fetal tissue okay and this was the twin who had vanished now the parasitic twin uh, usually occurs when there is incomplete resorption of uh, the other twin and majorly this twin is usually uh, a cephalic, they had no head and a cardiac, they had no heart so they actually relied on this uh, dominant twin who is also known as a pump twin to actually pump, you are using their own heart to pump blood that is coming from the placenta to feed uh, this uh, twin with blood now this is usually known as twin reversed arterial uh, perfusion because the blood usually comes from the umbilical arteries of this twin that goes to this uh, other twin and usually is what uh, allows this twin to, uh, to stay sort of alive uh, before either resorption occurs or they become a vanishing twin. Now in twin to twin transfusion syndrome this occurs majorly when you have a monochorionic or a single placenta being shared by twins in two different amniotic sacs. So you have what you call the recipient twin who receives uh, the majority of blood, okay, and the donor twin who sort of doesn't get uh, the, the blood, okay, or gets very little blood. So there's usually an unbalanced shunt uh, of flow of blood. And so what usually happens is that uh, the recipient twin, because they're receiving too much blood, they become hypertensive and usually they'll have too many red blood cells, so they'll have polycythemia. And because they have too much blood, they're also forming too much urine, so they are polyuric. And urine usually forms majorly the main constituent of hormetic fluid, and so they get polyhydramnios. Now what kills the recipient twin is usually heart failure coupled with circulatory overload and so we call that uh, hydrops vitalis. Now for the donor twin they are losing a lot of blood and so they become anemic, they become hypovolemic, they usually get renal failure, okay? they are oliguric and that means that uh, the amniotic sac has very little amniotic fluid so they also get oligohydramnios. Now what usually uh, kills them is the uh, growth restriction and so majorly they just uh, have intrauterine uh, fetal demise. So thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions you can put them on the comment section below.